Appreciate oh, hi, Victor. How are you, buddy? How's it going? I'm real good. Thank you for the second invite. I really appreciate it because I can cover some more ground that I would, would have loved to cover the last time. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, uh, share your screen and, uh, you know, you, there was a great response to your first interview and I know you didn't get through the presentation. Um, so, you know, it's thank you for after going through the experience of being interviewed by me to um, to be willing to go through that experience again. Yeah. So I, I'm not going to sing this time. So that's OK. Um, I, 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 yeah. I think uh, you're I think you're uh, 25 uh, with a bullet on the Billboard 100. This oh, OK, thank you, buddy. So uh, I think today you wanted to focus uh, not as much on <laughs> Uh, fishing metaphors, which is your methodology mm -hmm. of the river, and uh, I really, lo I really love the metaphors you use for your methods of trading. Uh, oh well, what I'd like to do, uh, Dale, is uh, uh, I'm going to have some uh, slideshow charts. Okay. Uh, and today I would like to talk about uh, one of my. Uh, screens that I call the uh, VZ's uh, weekly special edition. Okay. And I'll explain that in a minute and then I will switch to uh, live charts uh, because I want to talk about the importance of GAN's insistence that people would always have to and should look at a yearly chart, a monthly chart, even a quarterly chart and a weekly chart and then if they're working with their daily charts or even in a day they would want to be aware of where all of these levels exist and this is true because when i was a when i was a runner at the, the mid am exchange everybody had their little pieces of paper on the floor and they had basically they had the previous days high low and close yeah they had the the, the previous weeks high and low and, and close they even had the monthly high and low and close because they didn't want to get stopped out at a major, major level that corresponded to one of the uh, higher time frame uh, pivot levels. So I will go over that with you. And then if you don't mind, give me about, uh, if, when I have five minutes left, I want to share with everyone uh, my method of calculating the, what you've probably seen on some of my tweets, the mini ES's um, price level, uh, equates to a longitude on a 360 degree zodiac dial um, and how I do the calculation. So everyone by the end of this presentation will probably be able to do it themselves and I will give wow. you two examples of that. So if I, I'll need okay, about five minutes. Okay. I'm not going to, so, I'm um, not going to interrupt you. I'm not going to interrupt you. So okay. just, you know, just uh, work okay. through it. I, Sounds like a great presentation. Okay, so the first thing I'll do is I'm going to go through some of the screens that I I, I thought I would like to cover using the VZ Special Edition chart, and that's the uh, Bitcoin screen, the ES screen, the Gold screen, uh, the um, IWM screen, the Ten Year Note screen, and the DXY screen, and finally the US uh, Japanese uh, pair. Uh, if that's too much, there you tell me which one you want, but I definitely want to cover BTC and ES and gold right now. So here we go. Okay. Here is the uh, special edition chart that I designed for uh, tracking um, any instrument on a weekly basis. And if you see where the uh, green and red uh, uh, shaded arrows cover the uh, uh, upper or lower triangles, those are important pivot points for me. And if you notice, I'm going to put a uh, Sorry, let me get back to that chart. Uh, if you notice that the uh, the low made in July, there's a green pivot there at the bottom. It yeah. crosses the river and then uh, we would take a, tra a long trade once it crossed the river and the triangle um, closed above the top of the river, which is the upper you know, uh, blue line. Um, now we reached the high up in um, late August and we dropped into the river and we made a, a pivot low in September and now we're kind of like in the middle of the river. But I use a weekly chart because it tells me when I trade on a daily basis or, or uh, in a day, 
where these levels occur. It's always written down in front of me because I want to know if I'm getting into some sort of major pivot reversal area. Okay, I'll go to the next chart, and that is a. Um, so that Bitcoin, where it's at right there, it's neutral for you. Yes, it's neutral, but I will I will cover it. I will cover that in just a moment. But let me get back to the other charts here. Sure. Um, here's here's the ESs. This chart goes all the way back to March. Um, there 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 looks like there was a double bottom back in Mar in March and also in April, and then we took off. And Gann always says always buy a double bottom, and he says always sell a double top. That's one of his firm rules, and I see it all the time. I think the only time there's an exception is usually about 70% of the time it's a, it's a, it's accurate, 30% it doesn't work. So, um, and here's where it didn't work. It worked, uh, if I'm putting my cursor over here, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, the looks like the uh, August pivot high and um, the September breakout, you would expect the double top there reaction, but it didn't, didn't react, it actually moved higher. Um, what I like about these charts is when you see a, I'm going to put a cursor over this one right here, which is the August uh, weekly uh, uh, pivot there high. There's a um, there's a red there's a triangle covered with a red uh, pivot, and uh, it actually moved below the river and actually created another pivot at the same time. So there is what I call a uh, rare double pivot candle because that on that week we not only had a triangle at the top here at the red section we also had a triangle at the bottom that's pretty rare when i see that it tells me that the market probably made a high first then crossed a river and made a low and and uh and created this the uh the lower triangle and that is very bearish and actually that that worked out as a bear signal right there because the next week we had even a lower low. Okay, let me go to uh, another chart here. I'm gonna do gold here. And I think I heard your last uh, presenter and I think if I remember his name uh, is Stilianos. Yeah, that's Steve. Mm -hmm. That's Steve, okay. He said that the gold chart does not look good and I agree with him, it does not look good. Here's the weekly uh, uh, special edition for gold. Uh, let's see if we have any special pivots here to talk about. Uh, but um, we had a double, we had a triple bottom right here, back here, back here, and here. We had a triple bottom. And what does Gann say about triple bottoms? He says that you should buy a triple bottom. It's the only problem he has is with a when when the market makes a fourth attempt to touch that low, you know, then it's a, he says it gets dicey. But in this case, his his rule worked because we had a triple bottom right here in uh, in july and that's right on this 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 pivot here uh, so we had a move up we went through the river we're, we're now trading for all of july and august above the river and uh that's a very strong uptrend when you're trading above the river every week we finally made a, a pivot high way up here and uh, looks like right at the end of august and then we started to collapse. We went through the river, and now we're now trading below the river. Did your work did your work predict that pivot high up there with the red air, or were no. I'm because you're above the river? Was there anything back then telling you that gold could be vulnerable? That's a great question, and the answer to that is because I'm looking at my notes. I was making my notes last night, and uh, I'm trying to find if I can get you the answer to that. But if I don't have the answer. I will tell you that the, the method that I use to uh, square numbers, and I would square a number off of this pivot low here, where the arrow is, and I would project 180 degrees or 360 degrees or 720 degrees. And if I get to a level, which is um, the 180, the 360, the 720, the 1080, I'm looking for a change and a reversal. So I'll have to get back to you on that. I'll probably have to tweet it for you because I don't want to okay, go too but, far. Uh, so, but it, even if you didn't, two weeks later, you're in the rib, back in the river. That's where your work was uh, definitively negative, right? Right. When there, when when we fall back into the river, something's happening and there's a transition. I used okay. to call it the red zone, but I don't call it that because I don't like 
what's going on in NFL right now. But <laughs> that's my little joke there. But anyway, uh, yeah. When, hey, I'm, uh, into uh, the I'm river, taking the knee during the broadcast here, buddy. That's, <laughs> that's good. That's real good. I like that. I, I, someone asked me uh, if I took a knee because they know I've been talking about the subject all week long for a few weeks. I said the only time I take a knee, pal, is when I go to church. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that, man. Okay. And, and yeah. Uh, <laughs> All right, so yeah, so that's a very good observation. The observation is, how do I use these, this this screen? I use it with a uh, GAN square nine, and I start calculations at pivot. So I I calculate off of this low, I'll calculate off of this low, I'll cal cal calculate off of this high, and I'll start to calculate the downside off of this pivot high here. So let me go to another one here real quick, Korea. See what I have left. Um, we covered gold. So, do uh, you want to do uh, IWM? Sure. The same thing with IWM. We had um, get it back. Right. Yeah. It's IWM. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We've got this. That's a Russell for anyone who doesn't know the ETF. That's domestic stocks that usually do better when the dollar's stronger. So go ahead. That's buddy. right. All right. So I'm, and I've got a dollar screen coming up too. Uh, well, I would do a calculation off of this pivot low here where the green, the green air, uh, arrow covers that triangle there at the bottom of the, of the candle. And you notice there was a transition period. We went into the river right here. We broke out of the river and I would use the um, close. Well, in this case, I would, I would, uh, it closed inside the river. I would wait for it to trade above uh, the river the next week, which is right here. And if it's trading above the river, I would take this trade as a long trade because it's it's got my qualifications. On a weekly basis, we're trading above the top of the river line and we've got trying, we've got uh, confirms uh, of uh, up triangles uh, this week and the following two weeks. And I would also then do my calculations for square of nine off of this pivot and see where 180 and 360 come in. And if they're coming in, um, I'm gonna be looking for a possible reversal. Doesn't always uh, will happen, but here's the other converse of that uh, approach. If you break through a 180 going on the upside or a 360 and, uh, and it's solid, you know you're going higher. That's the beauty of this method is that um, it's a resistance that is created at the natural 180, 360 levels, um, or even 720 levels. But when they break through there, you're going higher. That's what has amazed everyone about this uh, market over the last, what, six years from the 20, mm -hmm. 2011 low? Yes. I think that's what's amazed everybody that keeps going higher. But uh, that's my observation about um, how, I, how I use the... Uh, uh, the 180 and 360 levels. I think they're very important to watch. And uh, there's also one other method that I have that I use in conjunction with this, and it's called the VZ Kronos method. And um, if people are interested uh, in that, they'd have to contact me. I'll have my uh, email address and uh, Twitter handle posted later. But the VZ Kronos method actually does a Fibonacci count. A Fibonacci count is um, from uh, major pivot lows to major pivot highs. But there are four other additional Fibonacci number, mm -hmm. numbers that I discovered that are not ever mentioned anywhere in any books that work. So that's that's why I call it the VZ Kronos method because Kronos refers back to the planet Saturn, which is the planet of time. And uh, I think Gann was very fond of uh, the, uh, the uh, cycle that, that the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn make in in their um, circle around our sun. And he felt that was a natural uh, cycle that uh, you would have to want to pay attention to and see if you can compare it to market cycle highs and lows based on aspects that those two planets make in the course of, uh, you know, uh, trading uh, history. So is that, um, is that where when those two planets are in oppositions, that it's even well, more critical? Yeah, they could be in oppositions to each other. They could be conjunction, which is, means that they're both together at zero, zero degrees conjunction. They could be at but 90 what are, degrees. What are the oppositions that people read about in the Farmer's Almanac? Is it the opposition to Earth? 
when you, we get these planetary oppositions? Usually, they're, they're oppositions to uh, uh, they're oppositions to selected planets to each other. Okay. There's also right. what they call they, in the almanac. They usually use a uh, what they call a geocentric method, but there's also a heliocentric method, which does not right. account Sorry. for retrograde motion of the planets, which can actually use both a heliocentric and a geometric um, uh, al uh, not almanac, but ephemeris. Um, okay. But when, and I will show you uh, an example of the geocentric uh, yeah, at the end here when we talk about the conversion of uh, price to uh, longitude with uh, with okay. a uh, easy program that's called PlanetWatcher.com. Okay, let me go to another chart here. Uh, let's look at the ten-year note because I think that's one of my favorites to actually talk about because if you look, the pivot high was made back in, in uh, late August. It's right here. And we're down here now. So we had a transition week, which is this, this big uh, wide, wide range weekly bar when we pushed through it and we went underneath the river. And now it looks like we're making a double bottom between this and this pivot here and possibly this one here. So uh, watch for a reaction here and see what happens. But if this breaks down further, it, we're going back down to here. See that back in right. March. Yeah. So my my so this chart looks kind of like the gold chart if you if you look at the gold weekly chart because the uh, the right side of the chart always the toughest chart to trade because that's the unknown part of your chart. Um, so you you look left a lot in your analysis, don't you? Yes, I do. But what I, what my goal is to make a chart as, as uh, clean and clear and easy to uh, uh, use, so that when I'm looking at the right hand of the chart, I basically know based based on previous pattern recognition, which is a, a title of a book by one of my favorite sci-fi authors, William Gibson, which has nothing to do with trading, but I thought I'd bring it in there. But anyway, okay. um, he. Uh, the, yeah, the right side of the chart obviously is the toughest chart, to, the toughest part of the chart to, to, to analyze because you don't know what's going to happen next. So these charts that I've developed help me set up the rules. I always use the, you know, once I put the chart together, I have a set of rules that I always uh, abide by. And that's, this is what I look for. I look for patterns that I've seen in the past, like you said, the left side of the chart and see what happens. So um, uh, the 10 year note is in definite trouble. And uh, the high was made back in uh, late August. So, you know, let's see what happens this week with um, the dollar. And I think I have a dollar chart next. Yes, I do. Okay, so this is the weekly special edition chart. I call it special editions because um, I realized that Gan had, had mentioned that um, he had a look back period of three. Uh, he later changed that in one of his books that he wrote to his um, uh, clients that maybe they should be using a look back period of only two. But I, I use a look back period of three. And that means I go back three, three candles. And if the candle that you're looking at here, right there, takes out this candle, this candle, and this candle's high, it gets a triangle. Wow. That, okay. And so, so we have a we have a, a bottom made here. Uh, looks like the beginning of September, and we go through the river, and now we're trading on the upside because we we look to see if this candle closes um, on the um, above above the river, and it has a has a confirmed uh, up triangle. So we would be long right now. I, I don't know how long this will last, but. Uh, we would have also been working at um, uh, computing the uh, square of nine levels down here to see where, where it hit here. But I wanted to go to the, uh, see what I can do here. Oh, one more chart here. I don't, you have to help me with this, this chart, Dale, because it, this looks very, very um, choppy. Tough. It's yeah, like we're in a is. trend, you know, we're, we're in a, we're in a, we've, since all of this year, we've been uh, sideways chopped. And these yeah, are the so I guess it's all going to come down to if you're right about a bounce in the bonds, right. then this then this could head down. 
Right. So, so head down. And if you're and and it, but, and but if you're right about gold being bearish, this should head up. Right. That's right. And uh, so I'm I'm so what I what I do is this is what I do. I well I'll show you on another chart here in a moment. We'll go to the uh, monthly and the uh, examples. But I would look at this pivot low and I would look at this pivot high and I would write down the high of this bar and the low of this bar. And I would take that and divide it in half. Uh, again, said you could make a fortune just trading the 50% line. So I would take the high of this bar, write that number down, take the low of this and have it in front of me. And then I would divide that range in the two parts and see where we're at today. And if we're, if we're above the 50, if we were at a 50% line, I would have taken the trade and gone long, which looks yeah, like it might about be about 111. Right so, yeah. Yeah, 111. Interesting. And yeah. back under 111 would be a short. Right, it would be a short. That's All that's right. exactly right. And if you just use that one rule, you don't have to get crazy and esoteric with Dan. You could what I what I did when I learned uh, Gan, I just picked out the things that I could understand and made sense to me right away. I wasn't going to uh, learn the whole. Uh, you know his whole repertoire because that could that could drive you crazy yeah uh, so that was my method and uh so yeah you're absolutely right we're in a trending we're sideways trend range so what do you do you try you you trade the top and the i mean the, the highs and the lows of the of the uh, of the channel okay. and this this uh weekly chart helps you define very clearly you know it gets rid of the uh the noise and it right. helps you stay in the trade in effect so um let me see what I can do now. Uh, okay, all right. I'm going to jump to uh, jump to my screen, and I, I promised people that I would talk about Bitcoin because I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what do you think of it? Yeah, I think okay. it's a I think it's an insane, crazy situation with Bitcoin because it's it's uh, something that professionals can't get a handle on. And then you find out that Jamie Diamond, Jamie Diamond bashes it, but yet the London office has been trading it. And then you hear stories about people, you know, uh, uh, regulators getting ready to come down on Bitcoin in, in China and, and curtail the exchanges to uh, trade it in. But here's, um, if you can see the screen, this is yes. the uh, Bitcoin one-year chart. So wow. I put, obviously this chart is exaggerated because all the action has basically happened, you know, this year. But if you had just been sitting there like like somebody that uh, doesn't trade too often, and traded the highs of each year, you would have gone uh, long right, right there. You would have gone long right there. Um, and uh, and if we finish had, like this, you go long at the end of the year here. That's true too. So let's what I do next. I change the uh, one year and I change it to a quarterly, because because a lot of people don't uh, recall that Gan talked about a quarterly chart and why it was important to him. A lot of the time, Gan uh, people will talk about again being very fond of a weekly and a monthly chart, but uh, but there's a quarterly chart that he's fond of too. And this is a good point uh, in time for me. to be in Victor with his uh, paying attention to. Uh, seasonal change, which normally happens around a quarter, the end of a quarter. Well, I think the seasonal change, uh, he, he wanted people to be aware of seasonal changes like right now, uh, but I don't think it's tied into his method of paying attention to the to the weekly Quarterly. and monthly. So let me, okay. let me change this to a quarterly real quick. Okay, here's the quarterly chart. The same deal. This low right here was the January uh, first quarter 2015 low. The number was 109. Wow. If uh, these next two uh, quarters were inside bars, yeah. So we had a breakout here. We had an inside bar. We had a breakout here. We had an inside bar. We had a breakout here. Now things get rolling. Because now we're trading. Now, if we're trading the quarterly highs here, and here, and here, you have three solid trades, with not a lot of uh, um, effort to look at a chart and waste your time. You know, looking at it literally every minute, a minute of the day. So, uh, like you said, we're we're right here now. And Good method. So this is 
this is this is what Gan wanted you to be aware of. And I, it's a good time for me to tell you about his books. And I'm gonna go over it real quick because a lot of people ask me, well, what's a good book to read about Gan? And I would probably say the best source is go go to the go to the author himself. And um, so he wrote a book in uh, he wrote a book in I've got the date here, uh, 1923 called uh, the I'm sorry. 1936 called the new stock trend detector i would i would look at that book because he talks about these um, the way to trade these uh screens on a monthly weekly and uh, quarterly and even yearly basis the other book that he has is the uh how to trade uh how to make money how to make profits in commodities that was 1942 and uh one of his last books that he wrote in 1949 because I think he passed away in 1953 or 52 was uh, my 45 years on Wall Street. And he talks about all of these methods again. And I think he did that, uh, he titled the book on purpose, My 45 Degrees, because he was a sly fox. He tried to you know, play mind games with people and have them try to figure out what, would he's, what he was really alluding to. And 45 to him was a major, major, major angle when he constructed his, his uh, daily charts and he looked at the 45 degree angle, the 90 degree angle, and 180 degree angle. So the other two books that I would recommend, he wrote a commodities course and he wrote a stock trading course. And uh, those are the other two books that are probably so comprehensive. They include elements of all of, all of his other stuff in his previous books. So I just wanted to mention them to you. And uh, let's go to um, a one- one, one, uh, one of our members is saying he went to India, Bangladesh, uh, Bangalore to learn about the nine planets. Is that uh, true? Think, this is? Well, I've heard that that's that's true, that he went to India to learn about the planets and probably about the pyramid and how it relates to the um, gra the graphic representation of a square of nine chart, which I don't have to show you tonight, but um, wow. I, I think that's where he discovered the square of nine method. He also uh, was a he was also a big buddy with an astrologer, an English astrologer, William Old Gold. William Gold was his name, and uh, his name his his pen name was Safariel, S E P H E R I A L. And I've got a lot of his books, and they're excellent books if you want to learn about astrology, written in a in a very uh, intellectual but uh, easy to read method. In fact, he belonged to a uh, uh, as he belonged to an astrological slash theosophical society that was run by a woman called uh, Madame Blavatsky. And that was probably in the 30s and the 20s. And they kicked him out because he was giving away too much stuff in his writing. So I thought that was pretty interesting as a character. <laughs> you know, giving away too much stuff is not allowed in these societies. So, but anyway, they, let's wanted, to, they wanted to sell it. Yeah, they want to keep it a secret. Yeah. Keep it a secret right. So yeah. here's a um, here's a one month chart. Let me get it changed here for you. Okay, so if we we're looking at using the same method on a one month chart, I would be looking at this trade didn't work out very uh, very well right here because we had um, a high and then a reversal. But here we here, here here's a trade right here. Uh, here's somewhat of a trade and here's another one and here was another one and here's a reversal so you know you got to watch what you're what you're up against and um oh, wow. yeah right now um because there's a lot of a lot of uh, we don't know who the players are the bigger players that uh, ha can move the market like this you know but uh jamie diamond certainly um yeah but jamie didn't fire those traders in in london he said he'd no. fire anyone well Right. No, he's also the kind of guy who gets paid three hundred million dollar bonus while the London Whale dude basically blew up the London office. Yeah, with, I, yeah. With his yeah. Of plays. He doesn't talk about that. No, he doesn't, but we remember it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I moved it to a one week because I think the one week is more is more is more in, uh, something that you should pay attention to definitely with Bitcoin because if you look at the one week chart. If you start going back to here, and I know uh, woulda, coulda, shoulda is a uh, is a term I like to use because people say, well, what good is your chart? You you could have 
you're just looking at stuff that happened already. You weren't there when it happened. I said, yeah, I know, but you know, I want to give you some examples to go forward. And uh, there was a guy I wanted to mention to you, uh, Dale. He used to write for the Sun Times when I when I was in Chicago, and it was back in the 70s. I think early 70s, mid 70s, uh, late 60s. His name was Jay Feldman, or he wrote a um, uh, uh, horse racing um, handicapping um, uh, column in the Daily Sun, uh, Chicago Sun Times, oh. and he was the one who wrote a book called "Coulda, Woulda, Shoulda," oh. uh, and and it had to do with his horse racing experience. But I'll never forget one day he he was. He was analyzing horses that were going to be playing, uh, going to be running at uh, Hawthorne. And uh, this horse was so bad. After he analyzed the horse, you know, you would have a, a little written comment next to each horse. And the comment was out for an airing. Out for what? Out for an airing. So, you know, the horse oh. just came out of the barn just to get some air. Oh, so, anyway, that was my what go, it could have Going to the glue factory. <laughs> Right. All, right. All right. So here, uh, here's a woulda, coulda, shoulda trade right here. We have a double top right here on a, on a weekly chart, right. and it blew through there, right there. So then there's another trade right there on the upside. Here's another one. Here's another one. Now we've got problems. Now we've got, you know, I basically a channel, channel, section, channel trading in here. Right. Some but type if you of correction. Got the capability to go short. You would have gone short right there, right where 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 the horizontal line is, right there. Okay, and you you'd be a little bit underwater here. You'd be a little underwater, right? Um. Okay. Let me uh, see what else I have for you. Uh, well, you said to let you know when we'd be getting close to a wrap. So, okay. uh, if you wanted to go to that. Um, okay, no, I'll do that. Okay, let me do that right away here then. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, first of all, I mentioned the one. This is this is the program I use because it's very easy to uh, use. Uh, you can you can just uh, dial into it online. It's called PlanetWatcher.org uh, uh, com. Excuse me. And this is the October. This is the uh, this is this is today's chart. Uh, you see the cursor right here. Yeah. That's the symbol for the planet Neptune, and it's at 12 degrees, 12 degrees um, Pisces. And so the question is, how do you convert that? You first uh, to get longitude. I'll give you that right now. Let me get it. Right. Here. So it's really true when you use the word navigate the market because you're talk talking longitude and yeah. latitude. No, okay. it's just longitude. Uh, just longitude. Okay. You just want to get familiar how to do the conversions. So okay. if Neptune is at 12, 12 degrees Pisces, here's an easy chart. I, I made an example here so people can actually screenshot it for themselves. Pisces, the, uh, it begins at uh, zero degrees. In other words, zero degrees Pisces is actually equivalent to 330 degrees on a 360 degree chart. Okay. And um, so what I'll do is I'll add, I'll use 330 and I'll add 12 degrees because I have to add 12 to uh, 330 and I get 342. Okay, okay now I need to, uh, if I'm looking at the ESs and uh, right now they're what? at um, Let's see. I'll put that back on there. Uh, the ES, let me check where ES is for you. Yeah, I can't uh, I can't see the number, but I think we're at what, 2502? Yeah. Okay. Here's the way Gan would do it. He would take 2502, and I like the ESs because they work very well with the 360 degree um, circumference of the of the uh, zodiac signs. So I take 2502, and I have to find out how many 360 degree rotations go into that number at any given at that time. So if I divide the 3502 by 360, I have 
a number of 6.95. So uh, I dropped the fraction and I multiplied 360 degrees by six. If I do that, I get a number of 2160. Follow that? I dropped yes. the fraction. So at this level, I would I know that I have a full rotation of six, uh, 360 degrees times six rotations. Now I take the number that the market's trading at 2502 and I subtract 2160 from it. And I get- You're talking S&Ps, right? Yeah, S&Ps. That's, that's okay. my favorite, so my favorite thing to use, because I think it's-, it's Yeah, 2515 is a SPY and the S&Ps are 2521 right now. Well, well, what you can do with the SPY, the, uh, you, you have to use a multiplier with the SPY. If you use right. the SPY, you have to multiply the actual lower number by 10. And you actually then end up pretty close with the ES levels. So if I subtract 2160 from 2502, I get a number of 342. 342 is very close to where Neptune is because we just said Neptune is at what I say, let me see what this. It's at 12 degrees. It's at 12 degrees um, Pisces, and that converts to 342 degrees. So you can uh. say, you can say the market is sitting right on the Neptune line. And you you see my tweets, you'll see me saying that. And why is that important? I've noticed that when the market is stuck right at at a major planet, the major planets for me are Neptune, uh, Saturn, Pluto. Uh, Jupiter, the Sun, and possibly Mars. The minor planets like Venus and Mercury, I don't, I don't usually deal with. But we're at a level here where, where if we break above the Neptune line, which is right where we're at now, we could go higher. Or this could be an important rejection point. Now, do you remember the Trump low? We had yes. a Trump low, which um, I wrote it down. Is November uh, 11. November 11th. I think I used November 9th, so I might be um, off. By yeah. the day. No, it might be the 9th. Um, yeah, the Trump low, I had 20, uh, ES is 2028. And I'm going to, I made that a screenshot of that, of that date as well. Let's see where it is. Here it is. Here's Planet Watcher for November 20th. I'm sorry, November 9th of last year. And uh, the Trump low then on the 9th was, um, 2030, uh, 2030 okay. in the night session. Okay, 2030. If I use 2030, again, I have to do the same thing. I have to find out how many complete rotations go into the ES market price at that point in time. So 2030 divided by 360 gives me a number of 5.63. I drop the fraction and I multiply 360 times uh, five and I get a, uh, a number of 1800 then i have to subtract 1800 from um the number you mentioned which is 2030. 2030. okay let's see what that does that number is 230. now we have to go back to your conversion chart which i will repost it here if you noticed uh scorpio which is right here, it begins at yeah. zero degrees Scorpio, that uh, converts to 210 degrees. And uh, if the market is at 230 degrees, that means that the market was at 20 degrees. We, when we convert back to the regular method, we, we convert back to 20 degrees Scorpio on that day. And let's see where the chart was. Okay, if you, I've got the cursor over the sun. This is Scorpio. It. This is Scorpio. This is 300 and, I'm sorry, what did I say? Um, 210 degrees. This is where 210 degrees would reside. It equals zero degrees Scorpio. So if I add, uh, 210 plus 17, I get 227. So for me, the Trump low was held because it had to actually hit uh, the, sun, the uh, sun's longitude line on that night. Hmm. 
So when I when I when I see the market move through all of these, and then we had the rally. Obviously, it's moved all the way all up through here, and we're now way up here. So we we had a we've had a you know a good run. So that's why I use the planet because I'm very I'm very curious uh, to find out why all this stuff works the way it does. So when what a great, uh, what when a great you get, presentation, Victor. Thank thank you, Dale. So that was I mean, my. You know, I, I've got any comments. Very interesting guest, Dale. Thank you for the knowledge. Um, the GAN emblem and uh, how do you interpret time cycles? So a lot of interest in the room. You guys are going to be able to uh, uh, view this. It's recorded, and uh, Victor's giving you information on how you reach him. Here's his email, and here's his Twitter. He tweets in my stream, books, charts, and uh, actually, I think he has his first interview pinned on his Twitter. So um, yeah. thank, thank you so much, Victor, for coming back again, and you topped yourself. It was okay. even more even more informative than the last one. Well, I, okay, well, I appreciate uh, the invite back. That's really kind of you, Dale, and uh, it's always great to talk with you and uh, share some of this with everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. It's great to have someone uh, that is a giver to share uh, work that took you decades of knowledge and wisdom to accumulate. So thank you, my trading warrior brother. Thank, thank you. you everyone. You're very welcome, my friend. And uh, thank you, Face. See everyone for Turnaround Tuesday. So whether you use GAN or Harmonix or Elliot or all of them, remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Thank you, Steve Volge, for uh, a great look at the complete board. And uh, very smart of all you people who took advantage of this deal. Today's the last day to get our seasonal prices. See everyone tomorrow. Adios. You're welcome, Simon. You're welcome, everyone. Thanks, Dale. You're welcome. Welcome, Victor. Glad to serve. My mission statement is to build up and edify traders every day. It's my hope that we accomplish that. See everyone tomorrow.